Welcome to the Entertainment Coach podcast, where we talk to creative industry professionals, actors, singers, writers, and the people who advise them. Today's guest is the go-to advisor for most of the A-listers you've ever heard of. She's the number one astrologer in the world with her website, astrologyzone.com, garnering 300 million page hits per year. Her monthly forecasts are required reading for anybody and everyone in show business. I'm talking today to the legend, that is Susan Miller. Thank you for doing this, Susan. Oh, thank you. Oh my, you're, you're the best. <laughs> thank I you. Am, no, it's true, I am the best. Can I use that as a quote? <laughs> um, you, so, uh, look, everybody, everybody knows you as an astrologer, and I said you're the number one. But I, I see, what frustrates me about interviewing astrologers or people that interview you it's just like it's just like well which sign is the best one to be in show it's oh i don't want to do any of that because you've got a real functioning working advisory clinic practically going on i mean you are anyway so i was going to say is do you work with um clients one-to-one in the creative industry in the creative occasionally arts? yeah yes well creatives are my favorite you know before i told the world of is I was an agent for commercial photographers and my whole life was working with art directors looking at the layouts estimating the costs and I remember the first time an art director was talking to me I was just new to the business and she said why am I trying to describe it wait a minute let me get a piece of paper here this is what we're trying to do and I thought oh these people talk in pictures I love this. I'm home. <laughs> I was a really wonderful agent. I did very, very well. I didn't need a second profession. I loved it so much. But Time Warner offered me a spot on their website in 1995. We had a meeting in July of that year. And uh, they offered it to me by December. They were ready to put me up. But I didn't quit my agent work for six years. I did both. Uh, you know, this is, learning this is, both. This is the thing, you know, I've been a super fan of yours forever, but the, I don't think enough people realize, because again, this is specifically, we you know we're doing this podcast to see if there's a niche that people really want to talk about the nuts and bolts of the entertainment industry. And with somebody like you, you know, you're so huge in the world of astrology, but they don't realize that you do come from the nuts and bolts of the entertainment industry. Like you said, I don't think most people are aware that you're a commercial photography agent for so long. You've got a real, does that inform the advice that you would give people? Like if you're, if you're yes. giving them any kind of advice, some, you know, like it's the old Freud thing, you know, sometimes a cigar is just a cigar, you know? It, 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 do you ever lean on your commercial agent kind of history as well? Yeah. Do you ever incorporate that? Well, it, anything involving money certainly makes you realistic immediately. <laughs> and I had to estimate the jobs properly. I'm dealing with Young and Rubicon and, and Ken Erickson, all the big agencies, all of, you know, sometimes in England too. So you have to be right or you have to eat your mistakes. So that makes you very purposeful and and concentrating on your work but I've been doing clubhouse which you do and I find that people are very interested in going into their own business but not very realistic because it takes often three years for a business to make a profit I went to NYU I majored in business and uh, you know how they they teach you these things and, and it's true I mean, you may get lucky and make tons of profit the first year, but the average is three years. And, and that's why I had to do the agent work during the day and the internet at night. But both were getting bigger. It's almost like putting plant food on a plant and nurturing yeah. it, putting it in the sun, watering it. Sooner or later, they both got bigger <laughs> and it got too much to handle. And to tell you the truth, in the beginning, I thought I will never have the courage to cut the cord on the agent work because I was a single mother, two children in a private school system in New York. And then they went to college and I paid for that. And then I paid their student loans. So I knew that I was going to have to have income just from a practical standpoint. Uh, but it did get to the point where both were getting too big to handle. And I had to let go of one. So I let go of the agent work. 
and I still love photography. That's why I make my calendar. I work with an artist Absolutely. in that case. I like to do well, creative things. This is the thing I think that, again, I'm trying to get across to uh, people, and again, it's not your problem, but how real world, so what somebody like you does. I mean, it, it's like, you know, the worst critics all say it's esoteric and foo-foo and stuff, but you do come with any, any time at all that people want to be able to discuss rates and commercial rates and how to deal with major corporations. You've actually done it. You know, that's the thing. And I, I always think that's really interesting because, like I said, I think that these kind of the arts that you practice are, uh, you know, often dismissed, I think, mistakenly. Oh, but you've totally. Actually, you've grown, uh, there you've are grown a, a creative industry. My, you know, I find that the people who read me, who read astrologyzone.com, uh, they, they tend to come from the creative arts. Creative yeah. people want to know how to make the edges of the room bigger. How can I make my life more interesting, more textured, more fun, more satisfying? It's not always about money. A lot of people want to feel that they're giving their time and attention to something that matters. But it's nice if you can combine the two and have enough to live on and take care of your family and, you know, do things. And, and I think you can. You just have to be smart about laying it out. But, uh, and I, I was just saying this to a friend, I never ask my readers to do something that I haven't tried myself. Yeah. I road That's test important. everything. <laughs> yeah. You know, so. Uh, and it, do, do you find there's a, you know, we're, we're in the creative arts. Uh, and as you say, you know, the, the, you've got such a huge following. Uh, you, you basically, you do these like legendary monthly forecasts and that's where the 30 million uh, page 40, hits a month come from. 40, 40 million now, is it? Words. Every month, 40, 40, words, yes, words. Every word. just for that. It doesn't include everything else. Exactly. And, and I don't speak to anybody from the 20th on of any month. Yeah. I go into, I almost feel like Persephone, you know, she goes underground in, in the winter, <laughs> the fall and winter, and then she comes out in spring and summer. I feel like my month is that way. I'm out there until the 20th and then I don't speak to anybody after yeah. that. But, but, but that's no small thing, 40,000 words a month. I mean, the average novel is about <laughs> 70 to 80,000 words. You're it's, doing half a novel hard. a month. I won't say it's not. The first two are the most difficult because I'm still memorizing the month. Even though what I do first, actually at the beginning of the year, I do, I, I set up these folders, January, February, March, April, so forth. Within the folder, I do charts of the new moon and the full moon for Aries, Taurus, Gemini, Cancer, you know, Leo, Virgo, and all the way through 24 charts. However, if there's a new moon or full moon at the very be at end of the last month, let's say the 30th, 31st, you're still going to feel it. So I have to add that to the, so that makes it 36 charts. And uh, those months are harder to do because I have to talk about all three. I never know if a reader is coming in this month and hadn't read last month. So I say it in different ways, but I do address that, that lunation that happened on the 30th or 31st, which is definitely still going to be strong. So but you, you um, do you see that you are making sort of precise, because like I said, you know, I think people uh, might assume that it's just you get your chart read by you, but you're making sort of pre advising precise adjustments with certain people. I'm a perfectionist and I'm doing yeah. the math. See, many people think that astrologers just are psychics. We're not psychics. We're using math that comes from NASA. And just like a person sitting by themselves could do something creative, in astrology, things start happening when two or more planets begin communicating with each other approximately within eight degrees. The closer they are, the tighter the aspect, like within one degree or zero degrees, then it's very strong. So I know the intensity of the aspect. And then I have to interpret it for all 12 signs. So when I have that folder, I, I'm looking at a 
photograph, a Polaroid of the sky. And I'm seeing where those two planets are communicating. And, and some of them are big, you know, big. Mm. You're going to feel it, you know. So I want people to listen to me. I had one girl have me do her chart. And I think I mentioned her to you a few months ago. I didn't tell you her name. I, I don't do that. But she was a, uh, trying to be an actress. And it really meant a lot to her. So she was taking all these classes, but she wasn't getting any auditions. But of course, we were in the middle of a pandemic. But her friends were getting auditions, even if they were on Zoom. And uh, I felt that her agent wasn't helping her. I said by her chart that she should be part of a community. Like if she's always on Instagram, she should join Twitter. She should join Clubhouse. She should make her desire known because she would make more friends. Uh, and I also felt she should change agents because I felt this, I think this agent lost faith that she can help you. You need yeah. somebody energetic, energy attracts energy. Well, just so happens, and this is kind of unusual, she had booked her husband with me too, two weeks later. So I, um, I said, gee, I, I, I think about your wife all the time. I'm kind of worried about her spending all this money. He said, no, no, she followed all your advice. I said, she did? Nobody follows all my advice. I wish they would. She said, no, she's on Clubhouse. Just that alone gave her so many leads and so many, so many people are trying to help her. She joined Twitter. She changed agents. I said, oh my gosh, in the past two weeks, yep. And she found a really good one and she's getting calls. And so sometimes it just takes somebody from the outside looking at your life through the chart and seeing where the good lies. You know, we all go through hard times, but there's always something good working for you in a chart. And you want to wedge that door open so yeah. that you can get more of it, you know. So I, I, I feel I, so good that she did that. I, no, that's, that's tremendous. That's what I mean, you see. I think it's these kind of small, tangible bits of advice that have real impact on people's lives and people's careers in the, in the, the sort of sense that we're discussing. I thought, my favorite one was I was on a conference call with you with, with an agent, and they were asking about, I'm not going to mention the name, but they said, they said, what do you think of this artist? He's, he's in litigation at the moment, and you've had, you, you, you took a look and you just were like, and this was on a conference call, you just went, oh, I, well, I think it's not going to go very well for him, this litigation, it's not going to be everything he wants. And I think he wants to change agents. And she's like, I'm his agent. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. And I think it's come to pass. I think in the I read oh, in the news, dear. the litigation had not come to pass. And I believe well, on the great, you know, I once had a person raise their hand in a live event that I did in real life. And she stood up and said, I've had 10 years of misery. And I don't remember saying this, but my daughter was in the audience and she said, mommy, you gave the best answer. If it's a year or a year and a half, even two years, okay, I can point to a planet. If it's 10 years, it's your fault, not the planet. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's, you see, that's what I mean. I, the, however- Oh, I'm you, never you're... that direct. I'm always more subtle, but- <laughs> Well, you're, sometimes you get somebody, they I've keep just lost your video. Head, hoping you'll change your mind and say something different. They'll ask the same question over and over. And uh, this was one of them. And I guess I was pretty dirty. I'm never like that though. I'm so soft with people because I don't want to hurt their feelings. But she said, mommy, you were right. <laughs> so, but it is true. You can't blame a planet on, on, on something. We, the planets, give us opportunity and challenges, but how we react to it is up to us. Yeah. We can't worry about things that haven't happened yet. The cancers are all worried about things that haven't even happened yet. They have a tendency to do that because they're ruled by the moon. So don't worry about things that haven't happened. They may never happen. Just worry about what you can control today. You can't control whether or not your company is gonna go out of business, but you can start looking on LinkedIn looking at you know some of your friends and telling them you really need a lifeboat out of this company you know whatever it is you know and people will help you they will 
you know, they'll keep an eye peeled. They may even give you the name of a headhunter they worked with, you know, so, you know, usually there's no signs when something's coming to an end. And that's what's so shocking because it's not in the interest, say, of that company to tell people they're having trouble. But if you're reading the paper, if you're staying tuned in and reading industry journals, you're getting signals that something's going on. And everybody should be very well informed from verified sources, not rumors, but well, sometimes rumors are correct, but you know, just to uh, try to get verified information and then make some plans because people hang on too long until, you know, the floor collapses, you know, and that's, that's kind of bad. You know, you don't want to do that. Have you ever, I mean, and yes, I know it's going to be the answer. But I just wonder if you've got any, any kind of examples of times you've helped people avert disaster, you know, where, where you've maybe spotted something. It's like, look, you need, apart from just like firing your agent, et cetera. Have you had those well, kind of. I have a close friend who is quitting her job at NBC in New York and moving to Chicago. And I don't think there's this many jobs in Chicago. And she was taking it with a new network that was brand new. And she had come from an established company. And I kept saying, I don't know about this job. I don't know. I, could you keep looking? And she said, well, my father's dying. I want to be with my with him and my mother in Chicago. So she left and then that new company fell apart. You know, she left during the pandemic and it fell apart during the pandemic. So um, I think right now people have to go with sturdy companies and she's, she's getting offers. And one is from a very controversial company that throws red paint on women who wear fur and stuff like that and then another another company oh, which really? is a telephone company and i said go with the telephone company everyone needs telephones you know a nonprofit may not have as much money or areas for growth you want to see if you can grow with the company you know that would be better you know so i'm waiting to see what she decides and uh she's a capricorn actually they can make big money this year i keep really? telling them it's raining diamonds in your second house of income. This is a year of reward. You know, when you have a really good aspects, don't settle for anything less. Sometimes in the beginning, you get offered a little and you're just happy to get a job. But I said, no, you can be choosy because you will, you will get the beautiful offer. You will. So... So we'll see what happens. I'm waiting to see. <laughs> no, you can see, look with my, you know, my former husband died recently mm. and I was very worried about the monster moon that happened on April 26th. It was a real horror. And if it was showing up in all our charts and it was in my daughter's in my chart and Diana had just gotten her Moderna shot. I was going at her second one. I was waiting two weeks before she got on a plane, because that was what was recommended. And I said, could you come just a little bit earlier? I don't like this full moon for daddy. And she said, what, are you telling me my father's gonna die on that moon? And I had to say, no, I mean, no, no, Diana, I don't have the total definite power of predicting something like that, no. She said, I'm coming on the first. Well, he, went into cardiac arrest in the hospital because they had dehydrated him too much. And uh, we're not gonna sue them or anything, we're just walking away. But um, it was actually a rehab center where they were teaching him how to walk again. He had Parkinson's and he went into a coma and died on May 1st. So she did have to change the ticket and come a little earlier, but she never got to talk to him. I mean, I can see tough things coming, especially if it's showing up in the whole family. If it's hitting planets everywhere, then, then there's something there. But we cannot see death in the chart. It's, it is veiled. Mm. And any astrologer says, oh, yeah, I can definitely. No, they can't. It's, you know, I couldn't tell if he would be sick or have a setback or, well, actually die. And I had said, please, God, let him live until May 1st at night. It has to be the very end of the day. It has to be right when it becomes May 2nd at midnight, uh, but he died at 8 a.m. This was just recently, you know, so yeah, it's been pretty recent. tough, you know. 
because I had just seen him two days before. And yes, he was a former husband, but you know, I, neither one of us remarried and we stayed friends and he lived in my neighborhood. I would see him all the time, you know, and, and he was doing well in February. And in March, he started getting sick. And by April, he was in the hospital and they were telling him, you're not gonna live. And May 1st, he died. It just was happening so fast. It, it, I'm still, I still quite don't believe it, you know? Yeah. So, um, yeah, so you can see things, but, um, you know, you can just go so far. I wasn't going to force Diana to get on a plane. And yeah. I mean, it was upsetting enough that she was coming to see him in the hospital. So, you know, it just, and I can never be sure I'm right. That's why I well, like which feedback. I, <laughs> no, exactly. I, I think, yes, well, exactly. I mean, that's the thing. I think um, through these series of interviews, you know, I'm dealing with people that perhaps are offering more, um, I can't say esoteric, but the, 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 if somebody was an economist or a financial advisor, um, they seem to be given more respect, if you like, as advisors. You know? Oh, yeah. Yeah. And, oh, there's a change going on now. Yes. The Economist yeah. magazine, they had me speak at their annual conference a few years ago. And, you know, lately I've been seeing doctors. <laughs> I, I'm always seeing doctors. And I'm, I used to lie and say I was just a writer. I didn't say what I was writing about. But now I just tell them, I thought, mm. what the, you know, what does it matter? And they all like, really? Oh, mm. I like this. There's definitely a difference in the response I'm getting from distinguished doctors, you know, top yeah. of the field. So no, and even journalists, some of them, like I was on CBS with Jane Pauley and I said to the producer, you're really sweet, like everybody is, but are you gonna get an expert to trash me with when I go off camera? He said, no, no, we don't do that. No, we came to you because we, we love your column and we're not gonna do that. So I was on February 7th of this year. So, um, gosh, when the media starts treating you better, <laughs> that's Absolutely. definitely. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, I, I don't know if you agree, but it seems to me that so, the, the, the world of so-called technical expertise and real world expertise, for want of a better word, has found to be lacking. It, it isn't coming up with the answers that people want. It isn't making the predictions that people would hope to base their life on. And well, it you looks know. Like Oh, you're going down an interesting path. I don't know. I think it was 60 Minutes recently. This man is a scientist and writes books. And uh, and he predicted the pandemic. Yeah. But it was because his wife, I don't know, she was reading the internet a lot. She was a journalist, too. She said to him, why are they soldering the doors shut in China? They're literally soldering them so that they cannot open and that the people have to stay inside. And this was early, like maybe October, November. What do they know that we don't know? There is something going on there. And he wrote a, a brand new book. It just came out called Premonition. And when he wrote it, he was predicting the pandemic and how it would sweep worldwide and, and how he led to that and how science doesn't allow enough room for intuition. Mm. Intuition shows up in charts in the eighth house and the 12th house uh, and through the sign Pisces, also through uh, Scorpio, but also cancer. And they, uh, the premise is facts are not enough because facts usually come out later. <laughs> you don't yeah. have them in the beginning. And, and God gave us intuition for a reason. And, uh, and if you have a feeling something's off, it probably is, and you should listen to it. You know, and astrology can help you. I can tell you which direction, you know, you should be looking, where the area of concern happens to be, what, you know, where the roadblocks are and, uh, and how, how to blast them, how to get rid of them. <laughs> those yeah. big boulders in front of you you know i can i can give you ideas several ideas and then you pick the one that feels right for you well yeah i, I mean i always liken astrology to um 
it's kind of like a long range and long distance uh, meteorological report. It can tell you what kind of climate you're going to be going into. But yes. It, it doesn't say you're going to get hit by a bus on that day. It just says yes. Look, it might be raining, take an umbrella. You know, it's that kind of. Yes. What's the what's the preponderance of um, the environment at that time? Well, you know, um, the outer planets set the major themes that go on in our lives. Uranus takes seven years to go through a sign, Neptune 14 years, and Pluto can last 30 years in a sign. It depends. It has an elliptical uh, orbit. So some years it's only, say, 12 years, and other years it stays in a sign 30 years. But the slower a planet is moving through a sign, the more influence it has because it's there so long. And, uh, you know, Pluto went into uh, Sagittarius in 1995. And I have this picture in my head of God sitting with Pluto. Pluto, I'm sending you into Sagittarius. I want you to revolutionize publishing. I want you to make the world a smaller place through the dispersal of information. And Pluto says, oh, this sounds, this sounds like fun. How long will I be there? Only until 2008, because in, in 2008, 2009, I don't like the way the world is handling banking and mortgages. So I'm going to send you into Capricorn to work on that later. But in the beginning, you're, you're going to have a big influence on the internet. He said, well, will I have any help? He said, yes, uh, uh, Neptune is going into uh, Aquarius and so is Uranus. They're not going to get there right away, but they are going to work with you five years after you're in Sagittarius. You'll lay the groundwork and the, the foundation and they will come in and help you. So I can I see the planets as, as people in my head and, and how they're helping or, or challenging each other. Right now, Saturn's challenging Saturn and Saturn is structure and the way things always have been, tradition. And Uranus is, this isn't working anymore. We have to try something new. And they're clashing right now all year. They will stop clashing by next year. But this year, the clanging and banging, sometimes Saturn will win, sometimes Uranus will win. We, want, we don't want to throw everything out. We want to keep landmark buildings and castles in London and Germany. And, but some things have to change. And uh, in companies or um, in society, you know, and, and we have one more coming. This has been happening all year. It's happening on December 23rd, 24th. It, it depends on your time zone. And uh, that'll be the end of it for about more than 30 years, oh, really? 38 years. So that was the theme of this year. Next year. Hang on a second. Next Hang on. Well, before so no, hold your better. horses. Hold your horses. No, no, no. No, I want you to continue. What are you saying? Twenty third, because you know there's ways I can rip news stories out of this podcast and just make us even more famous. The twenty third, twenty fourth. What are you saying? That's the the end of a cycle of the, the oh end God, of world. the of the dispute between Uranus and Saturn. They will have caused a public mm. forum to emerge about different issues in society and uh so you're saying trump is coming back changing. christmas day is what you're saying yeah i mean it's kind of close to a joyous time of the year but uh it you know uh the last one was on uh june 14th and the one before that was on february 17th but these planets move so slowly that right. you just don't feel it on the exact day that it makes a yeah. peak hit. You, you feel it pretty much all year because they're kind of close. They're not moving a lot. And, um, and then, then what happens? I interrupted you, but I wanted to clarify that we're talking about that's a major thing. Around, that, uh, around Christmas uh, 2021, we're beginning to see perhaps signs well, of the dispute. Well, it's a different being way of looking at things, a different structure. And we're, we are seeing change in society. Uh, Black Lives Matter was a very good example in June, and that's when people took to the streets. But but we're also seeing how women are looked at more seriously. Um, and I feel bad about Governor Cuomo because he was such a good governor. He was fabulous. But 
people didn't like working in the office. I have a dear friend who was working in that office, but she worked from home. So she didn't have any of those problems that other people had, but she had a huge job in communications. So I said, did the police call you? She said, no, no, they didn't because <laughs> it wasn't there. No. <laughs> and, uh, but she said it was hard on some people to work there. And you no, know, I understand both sides. Just from a selfish side, he was fabulous for New York. He did a lot of things that we could see and touch, like, the renovation of Penn Station. It's no longer embarrassing for yeah. visitors and to come out. assistance, obviously. And yeah. he, he was working on uh, the um, the airport, LaGuardia. It no longer looks like a third world country. <laughs> it's beautiful. It looks like a Disney movie. It sparkles. You're kidding, you know? really? <laughs> oh, mm. it's gorgeous. They really did something modern well, with don't, it. Don't you think he brought about his own downfall? Yes. By adding yes. all that sort of hubris. I, I just... Yes, I just think sort of doing his own PR, you know, taking advantage of the pandemic and he had, you know, initially had a good pandemic, but then, you know, you're, you're obviously, you know, politics in America is very oppositional and you can't be crowing Hard. in the middle of a, a pandemic. He, I, yeah, I, I well, you know, he's playing it. What, what made it hard is that the government said all the states you're on your own and they mm. were not equipped to figure out I've got, you know, I've got people dying in the streets and I don't know how to do this. But he built a consortium with the other states so that when they were negotiating yeah. with the manufacturers, they they had bigger numbers. It was just smart, you know. Yeah. And uh, no, I, I liked him, but no, yeah. I mean, it was too sordid. It, it had to change. Um, Could you, would you uh, have been able to, do you think if you'd have been around him um, yes. I mean, apart from like, you know, well, uh, keep your distance, you apart from that, would There's you have been able to help here. him? He was born December 7th. There is a major... I, I think it was the 6th. I think it was the 6th. Okay. But even so, there's an eclipse... Do you know why I think it's the 6th? Why? Because I'm Sagittarius. Every bit of bad news at the moment is happening to Sagittarius. All right. So <laughs> I, I looked him up as it happened. I look and it, the, the the tragic news about Christina Applegate. We got oh. the the Britney conservatorship. We've got yeah, she's a Sag. I know. And then we have and I just went, oh please don't. So is Taylor it up. Swift, but she's born the 14th, I believe. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she Later. seems to be the she seems to be the um, the exception that proves the rule. No, you know what it is? She's on, later what? degrees. Really? The earlier degrees are feeling it, not the later degrees. Yeah. But we have an eclipse December 4th. It's a new moon eclipse, not a full moon. That's much happier. It means a new path. So he'll be announcing a new job right around his birthday. Right after well, that eclipse evolves on the 4th of I think December. He'll be like You'll be like running the kitchen in prison or something. Is that what you're saying? No, no. I think he'll get a nice off job. Duty. He won't be in government. It'll be something new. But he has amazing contacts and he also understands how government works from the inside. And that's valuable to a lot of companies. So, no, sometimes I think we go overboard. We just beat someone to death. You know, they want to mm. impeach him now. And, and everything about me is to be kind to people. And, mm. you know, I think he suffered enough. He lost his job. That was a huge but, but thing. I know. Don't but this impeach is the, him. You know, leave this him is alone. The real world, this is the real world stuff. He said, when, when people were saying bad things about Trump, Cuomo said, believe all women. He just kept saying, believe yes. all women. He, instead of doing it, if he had just stayed in his lane and been yes. frankly, more Obama-esque about the whole thing, he could have weathered anything. Well, you know what? When I was studying astrology from my mother, I was 14, and she talked to me about self-undoing. Right. I said, Mama, she said, that's the 12th house. I said, but Mama, you're saying that people do things to hurt themselves. They would never do that. And, I, and she looked just like me. And I remember she, she went like this laughing and she said, all the time, Susan, all the time. Yeah. Sometimes yeah. they don't know they're doing it. Sometimes they don't care. Sometimes they don't understand.
I let they're doing it. You know what it is? It's almost like a person who embezzles a thousand dollars. Oh, that went well. Nobody caught me. Okay, next time it's going to be five thousand. Next time it's going to be fifty thousand. Next time it's going to be a hundred thousand. They, you know, Absolutely. it keeps on going. No, this is the thing. And this is weirdly it sort of brings us around to the creative arts because so many people get into the creative arts because frankly, they're slightly damaged and then they can't quite, it, it's trying to resolve that damage. Most people, I, I think so many people get into the performing arts, for instance, as a form of therapy or oh, uh, some do. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, unless, right. they, unless they kind of make some kind of peace or acknowledge that wound, if you like, they are constantly uh, picking at it, if you and, and it, it damages their chances of actually. Uh, Look, we're all nuts. I'm not sure. I don't run human. into a lot of people like that, but but you know now. Yeah, because you're dealing with the A-listers who fix themselves by now, aren't you? <laughs> well, you don't deal with the oi poi like me. No, no. <laughs> you're fantastic. You don't need any help. But now that therapists are such a part of society, it's no mm. longer. Um, a weakness to go to a therapist. God, half the people in New York go to them. Uh, mm -hmm. It's it's fine. People kind of expect it. So I think that that helped a lot. You know, it definitely helps. You know, and a lot of therapists actually use astrology. You know, Carl Jung, the great Swiss psychiatrist, I loved astrology and wrote about it. He, he said, just like the grape, now I'm saying this quote a little off, the people look it up. I don't want them to send letters. I agree. I, it's a little <laughs> off. But just like the season of the grape, we are unique to that season, that month, that year. And, and you know, we come from nature. And, and he was explaining why each of the signs are different and, and how we all have talents to give in a very poetic way. He called the the ocean and and he linked it to uh, Pisces where it's the collective unconscious where all souls mingle as one all nationalities all uh, religions every uh, all of us mingle yeah. as one in the collective consciousness and I love that image I love that because we are much more the same than we are different. You see that in astrology. Absolutely, I mean, the, absolutely. The, the CEO and the janitor will ask me the same questions. You know, will my family be okay? Will I have enough money for them? Will, you know, different things on a different scale. That's all, you know. I, I know, look, I'm such a big advocate for the whole, always have been, I was, you know, completely brought up in this whole thing. And you always get like so-called skeptics saying, what so there's only 12 types of personality what everybody uh -huh. born on that day is exactly and i'm going like i don't think there's even 12 types i think there's about seven i think astrologers are being generous you know what i mean most, <laughs> no most there are, are just well, lumps like me the greeks say that there were only um 20 plots to plays or something you would know better than me but that there's a certain amount and that everything it is, no, else it's, is Absolutely. I thought it was like seven, isn't it seven stories or something? Isn't that it's something? I, something someone probably will write number. it and correct us on this. Now, but, people uh, don't you know, like to, signs. people don't like to feel like they're just inter interchangeable little um, Lego no, 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 figures, they're not. but they are. No, no, but we, there's something that I've never introduced to the readers because it's just too complicated for them sometimes to grasp, but we divide a sign like Sagittarius into deacons. There's yeah. three layers. And the first layer is a double Sagittarius. The second one is a mixture of Sagittarius and Aries. And the third one is a mixture of Sagittarius and Leo. And they take on shadings, you know, but uh, it's too much oh, to I tell see. the so, so hang on, is that the same with every sign? So it would be, yes. you so take the on the other one, fire like, signs or the other air signs? That's why the people, the Pisces, the ones born in February are wildly creative. Gloria Vanderbilt was, God, painting until she was 95 because she wrote to me. She, she asked me to your calendar. Didn't she, didn't she do your calendar? She did two of them. Yeah. I loved her. I met Anderson and I said, Anderson, I'm working with your mom on a calendar. And he said, I know all about you. I said, you don't miss anything. He said, nothing. <laughs> but totally. he said, you're making my mother very happy. 
uh, she did a calendar and then she did such a good job. I wrote to her and I said, this is a forever ever promise. This is what I said to her. She was in her nineties. I said, could you give me 14 pieces of original art? I know that's asking a lot. She, when I told her this was a forever ever promise, she said, she wrote back. I said, you don't have to give it to me in a year. I mean, I mean, look, she, I knew she was in her nineties and, but she wrote back, I'm on it, Susan, I'm on it. You're wow. gonna have it. And she did produce it. And she was born, I think February 19th or 20th. Uh, Steve Jobs, February 24th. Those February Pisces are in the deacon of Pisces, Pisces. So super intuitive, super creative. The next 10 days from the first to about the 10th, uh, those Pisces are Pisces Cancer. So they are oh, very see, okay. loving and giving. And, um, and then the last one is Pisces Scorpio. So they're very business oriented too. You Not know, people dismiss basically. Pisces thinking they're too soft and creative, but Forbes says Pisces and Virgo are the highest money makers because they put the, the emphasis on the product really. That's yeah. my take on it. Yeah. Sharon Stone. Sharon Stone. Oh. I worked with Sharon Stone and she is yes. Pisces. She just wrote a book woman. Yeah. about what it was like to be in that movie. It changed her life. It, decent. For, what was it? Uh, no, I'm trying to remember yeah. the name of the movie, but uh, that, that made her a star. She said it was hard on her. It was uh, not easy. And uh, she was on television discussing it. Actually, I think that would be a great book to read. Her latest book, yeah. You know, she's uh, yeah, no, super creative. She is super creative. What is the name of that film? Basic Instinct, that's what it was, wasn't it? Yeah. That's what it is, yes. Yeah. I'll tell you, one of my, uh, this, is, <laughs> this is totally off piece and just anecdotal, but I asked you once to have a look at this person it's like, I'm just going to start working with them or whatever. And you just went, oh, yeah, yeah, no, no, lovely, lovely. Yeah, looks like a drug addict. Is he a drug addict? Oh. <laughs> I no, I like... didn't say that maybe he likes drugs or could be susceptible to drugs. Yeah, I think you were being delicate. Anyway, the point is, were yeah, they? just meth head, total meth head turned out. Yeah. Oh. Amazing. Okay. Uh, well, you know, it's, it's good for a mother and father to know a child's chart. You could see if they have musical mm. ability or, mm -hmm. you know, you want to create an environment where when they're little, you have lots of things for them to do and, and see what they gravitate toward and where their talent lies and where their interests lie. Yes, exactly. No, you're absolutely right. I think that's, um, I think that's a very good point. That's a very good use of astrology because again, it shows what the preponderance of potential might be. You know, you, yes. want to, you know, maybe nurture that before it, um, instead of it being just a guessing game, you know, it's like, is it kickboxing or is it the clarinet or whatever, that sort of direction. <laughs> but, but, but the thing is, I, 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 I've taken so much of your time, but I do want to get into this. Oh, no, thing. no, like, it's fine. When, if you're getting, if you're getting 30 million page hits a month, Okay, and you start. No, no, I don't different... get thirty million a month. I get eleven million a year, and one point five million a month. But that's just the website and doesn't include. No, the app. I think you're wrong. I think I've gone into you. I've got your Google data. I think you get thirty oh, yeah? million. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you I get thirty. Get, thirty million pages. I get the what average I... reader spends five and a half minutes. Yeah. Exactly. They spend exactly. time. Because now you've got the, now you go page by page. That's where you get the 30 million from, because it's just like, I think you get 11 million visitors. Oh, well, unique visitors, yes. Unique visitors, that's the 11 million. And I think because they click through pages, that's where you get the 30 million Yeah, that's pages. where, well, they're definitely staying on the site and they're coming yeah. in two and a half times a month, according to Google. Yeah, But exactly. you know, it's funny yeah. with apps, if you downloaded it last year, you're not counted this year. So all we can oh, deal with right. is impressions. Is new impressions. Yeah. Okay. So I have 15 million engagements, impressions a year where, you know, the company told me they're totally coming back. You know, experts have looked at this and because uh, now I'm the app developer. I do it with my team. 
Yes. I, I came out with a new one last year, August 28th. Uh, if you just, if people listening want to get it, just put in Susan Miller. It's called Daily Horoscope Astrology Zone by Susan Miller, but just put in Susan Miller and I'm in a white blouse. Uh, the problem was that people were pretending to be me. So my app developer said, uh, you know, my team said you have to have a picture of yourself or nobody's going to believe it's yours. So I'm like, okay, but I'm coming out with a new one next month that I yeah. can't talk about. Um, but it will not cannibalize the app. It's something completely separate that will add to on a daily basis what you already have. And uh, it's, I'm really excited because this has been in development two years. I had to figure out how I could teach a team what I needed, <laughs> but that's wow. what I did during the pandemic. And I wrote another calendar. They just sent me the proofs and- um, But this is, this is what I wanted to, I wanted to leave the listeners with some, like I said, some real world uh, examples, because like I said, you, you with those visitors to the site and all these various apps, etc., and new secret projects that you can't talk about some sort of Batman lair kind of thing. Um, but, but you actually have grown a media company yourself from the kitchen table. And I mean, it's been massive for a long time from about 1995. I, I wanted to just basically get look, 25 uh, years, yeah, 25 years. But you know, there are there are media companies that call themselves media companies that try and do deals with you that you're bigger than, you know, you have more <laughs> traffic than I, I'm just saying that this is not some you're not sitting in a beach hut in Malibu kind of just, you know, selling surf beads, you know, you've actually created a hardcore media juggernaut yourself and you and as a result, oh. you're adv you're advising other people in this, you know, who also want to aspire to be in uh, media juggernauts themselves. I'm, I, like I said, I didn't, I just wanted to do these interviews and I wanted to interview you because like I said, I want to make that connection for people that you are a media giant, for instance, and you, oh, but you did it yourself. You didn't inherit it. You did it from scratch. What was, uh, the, this is a long winded way of saying, I know you've told me this before, but what prompted you what was the what was the um the motive for starting that what became astrologyzone.com uh, from the kitchen table well it was astrology actually when i was nine years old my mother i asked my mother i was at my grandma's house i didn't like being out of manhattan we had to go to the country every summer and i would have a little calendar checking off when I was going to go back. So one day I said, would you read my chart and tell me what I'm going to be when I grow up? She said, sure, sit on the bench under the lilac tree and I'll be right back with your chart. And she said, well, Susan, you're going to write when you grow up. And I'm like, right. Wow. Nobody in our family writes. She said, and I'm going to work on your grammar. I don't know what you're going to write about, but it's very clear. Like, wow, okay. But then when you get close to 40, some newly invented form of communication, so new we don't know the name of it yet, will change the way you work and be the channel in which you make your ultimate contribution to the world. I will never forget those wow. words because the midheaven is your contribution, your legacy, your reputation, the, the honors you get. So now I'm a kid, right? And and Aquarius was up on the midheaven. So now I'm driving her crazy. What could it be? What could it be? She said, well, TV was my big change in my life when, I, when it came out. But I think you will be on TV, which I am. All the time. But, and I didn't believe that either because I'm a very shy child. But uh, I think it's something else. Something else is the hub of the wheel. Now I'm, I have a million questions. you got to tell me more. You have to tell me more. She said, well, it runs on electricity, whatever this new thing is. And Aquarius is an air sign. You know, those little zigzags is yeah. its, uh, its motif. Well, that's air. So whatever it is, it, it, she said to me, and this is what zippered me shut because I'm following her around the house. I'm behind her when she's washing dishes, vacuum cleaning. I'm right behind her. She said, Susan, all I could tell you is there's little invisible dots or lines that are in the air that have something to do with your writing and this new thing that's coming. And I'm like, 
oh my God, this is even more mysterious than it was when she first told me anything. So I zippered shut and she said, just keep it in your pocket. You'll know when it hits. Well, the day that timing called me to be on their site, Pathfinder, which wasn't AOL yet. It was Pathfinder. Mm -hmm. That was what their mm -hmm. internet was. And, and the creative director had given them my name because I had written a small book that went really well. And she said, I have a feeling about you. You know, sometimes we don't take ourselves seriously. It takes someone else yeah. to take you seriously. And I'm indebted to her forever. I still stay in touch with it. I call her my, my fairy godmother. Her name is Jackie Meyer. But anyway, uh, she sent my name up there and I meet Harvard, Yale, and Dartmouth, three at the table. And then over here, it would be my would-be editor, Anne. They're always called Anne, if they're editors, or Emily, <laughs> which is wonderful. And I and I, do you have an idea of what you want? And they said, yes, we want a, a daily column every day. I said, no, no. How many words? 50. I said, I want to change the world, and I can't change the world with 50 words per sign. And they're looking at me like, what? Wow. I said, no, no, I want to write long monthlies. And they said, but all the pundits say you shouldn't do anything monthly. You should have somebody come in every day. I said, they'll definitely come back and look at what I wrote because I write with detail and very precise you know, advice. They said, wait, wait, wait. How much would you write? At the time, I said 17,000 words a month, but now I'm writing 40. But the, at the time, they said, won't you get tired? I said, tired, tired, me tired? No, I wasn't born with family connections or family money, but God gave me energy, and that's a natural resource. That's great. And so they're looking at me. I said, and then I told them what my mother said. And I said, I know now. And I put my arms like this. This is my destiny let me do wow. this and they were very quiet and they were looking at the man in the middle nobody knew what to say but he said time inc will not stand in your way you're so passionate we're gonna let you do whatever you want and uh and he did and astrology zone uh and it was funny because in the beginning when you would put all, all the way through my my three years with timing when you put in horoscope or astrology it would say not found and that would trigger infoseek uh which was a search engine and it would say go to these competitors i said can we change that he said no it's too political the reporters don't like having you on pathfinder website i said all right well i still have my day job and i'm happy and i love working yeah. with you and with the editors of Time and Anne, I learned information management. How you serve up information matters. Let me give you an example. You, have you ever had your best friend say, you're not gonna like this news? Well, that's a terrible way to begin a conversation. Don't say that. Let Say, I have some news. I don't know how you're gonna react. You know, it might be tough, it might not be, but here's what it is. But how you serve it up in what order you serve it up matters uh, and i uh what they didn't figure on is yahoo and newsweek kept coming out with issues magazines sites we love and can't with, live without and i was always on the list so i'm building fast and they were surprised yeah. and uh i was doing great but then one day on, <laughs> on my birthday they said, uh, an internet company is buying us. I said, no, no, you're buying the internet company. They said, no, it's the other way around. And I said, you're such a big company. How is that possible? They said, no, and you have to leave because the internet company will decide which astrologers are on the service. Now they were talking about AOL, but they weren't telling me. You have one year to get off the servers. You have to find another happy home. That was the words they used. I sent out 50 uh, beautifully uh, composed proposals. Uh, I had an art director design what I wanted to say and have the logo and 100% rag paper. I went to Katie's Papery and got lizard little envelope portfolios to, to send to the 50 companies. 
and every door is slamming in my face and I'm looking wow. into an abyss and it was scary. And I, the only person who was willing to talk to me worked for Microsoft and that was in Bellevue, Washington. And I looked at my chart and that week, the end of the week was the luckiest day of the year when Jupiter was conjunct the sun. So on planet Susan, I'll fly to Bellevue on, you know, that's near Seattle on Monday. I'll have the meeting on Tuesday and by Friday we'll have a letter of intent. <laughs> Well, I couldn't have been more wrong. I get there, <laughs> it's pouring rain. There's a dentist convention and I stay in good hotels, a woman alone, but I, I had to stay in somewhat, it was okay. It wasn't totally dumpy, but it wasn't my favorite. And the phone is ringing and my friend from Microsoft is on the phone. She reported directly to Gates, but I never told anyone that I had a friend that high up because it's annoying. I, I don't want them to think I have any pull with her. She said, how did that meeting go? And I'm telling her it was a nightmare. They wanted me to cut my, my, um, my text to 100 words per sign. And I, by that point, I had a 5 million page views. And wow. I couldn't deliver that to them if they were going to change the product. So and she's saying, well, who exactly was in the meeting? I said, oh, he's going to be fired next week. What was he doing? Oh, and Melissa, she hasn't had a creative idea in 12 years. Oh, no. Who else? And I'm telling her, and she's like, this is a nightmare. Stay away from Microsoft. So now I have nowhere to go. And how can I be so wrong that this week was so special? Well, now I call New York. How is my little team in New York doing? I'm coming home. And they said, no, you can't come home. I said, why? It's snowing and we're having a big blizzard and they're closing all the airports tomorrow. And they're telling everybody like, it's a catastrophe, you know, and you won't be able to get into JFK. And I'm like, no, you have to stay on the West Coast. And I'm like, okay. And then I, I realized I had sent one proposal to Apple, but the cover letter said, I don't want any money from you. The reason I'm writing to you is I'm really upset of how um, Steve Jobs is being treated in the press. He's not being taken seriously. They're laughing at him. And I think I could change that. I may be just a little mouse, but you know, if you give me your logo, our, uh, I write on a Mac, the servers are Mac, it's edited on a Mac, everything with time is Mac. So it would be truthful, could you give me your logo? Well, I don't hear from the man and I call him and his secretary said, oh, I put it away. I hid it, it came in at Christmas. I knew this was really special. I'll put you right through to Dan. And Dan was one of the eight that Steve had picked to bring back Apple when he returned. And Dan said, no, I didn't see anything, but, um, but I'm talking to you. And I don't read paper ever. <laughs> I'm realizing I'm talking to Silicon Valley now. So I tell him and he said, oh, Steve, Steve told us to find interesting people who interest people who do interesting things at their Mac. So I, uh, he said, you definitely fit the bill. I'm going to have a writer write about you. So they wrote this story about me and I had given them a list of all the days they should come out with product, you know, new products, debuts. Yeah. And I had asked David Graham, who wrote the story, why didn't you use them? He said they were close to the ones we had picked and we didn't want our competitors to know. I'm like, oh, and we certainly didn't want you to list good days because everyone would read it in the, uh, in the industry. So we had to leave those out. But now they're sending all these people to my website. This was a, a couple of months ahead. So I called Dan right then and there since I couldn't come back to New York. Would you have dinner with me and with Kathy, which was like Miss Money Penny, who's Cracker Jack assistant and David for dinner in San Francisco at Post Rio Wolfgang Puck's restaurant. And he said, sure. I said, I don't know how to drive. So would you mind coming to San Francisco? No, we love to drive. As I'm coming down to San Francisco through the airport and all that, 14 people are calling me to ask me if they could come too. And I have a theory, aside from your parents who love you to death, you may have five people in this life who believe in you and who care and who help you. And Apple was one of them. And I thought, 
they've sent me this traffic. They're being so nice. They call the article, the astrologer who believes in Apple. I said, you know, everybody can come. I thought I'll put it on visa. I'll pay it off. I don't care how much it comes to. I want to thank them for being so good to me. So I get there and it's a long table. Dan's at the other end. I'm at this end. And not all the people are there yet. The waiter says, everyone's going to have champagne. Do you want some too? I'm like, oh, sure. And then I'm trying to give him my credit card. And he said, you're too late. I said, how could I be too late? Not everybody's here yet. And he said, they paid yesterday. And Dan's figuring out what I'm talking about quietly to the waiter. And he said, did you think Apple was going to charge you for 14 dinners? I said, you keep getting it backwards. I'm supposed to be helping you. And you keep helping me. He said, you are fun and we're enjoying you. Don't worry about it. And at that dinner, he asked how Microsoft went. And I said, no, it didn't go too well. And Kathy said, have you tried InfoSeq? And I said, I can't get through the switchboard. Many companies in Silicon Valley think you're a headhunter and they won't let you through the switchboard. They said, oh, all former Apple people are working at InfoSeq. So she gets me an appointment for Friday. I have no idea how I'm gonna get there because I don't know how to drive. Not knowing that Caltrain takes you right down. But you know, if you stay in a decent hotel, which I was staying in a nice one, the concierge helped me. And then there were cabs right there. I had no trouble getting there. And InfoSeq, the meeting was fantastic. It was unbelievably good. Although there was one point when the woman dressed in jeans, and I'm from New York, I'm, I'm used to a more formal situation. She goes like this, we charge a fortune to host other people's websites. And remember, I have nowhere to go. I am looking in the abyss and I'm listening to myself respond. No, you have it backwards. I charge a fortune. Wow. And she said, without blinking an eye, who handles the advertising? I said, you do, I don't wanna mess with it. She extended her hand and said, sold America. And I was on InfoSeq, which became the Walt Disney Company the next month. Suddenly I'm, I have to almost represent, but they had already committed to me on InfoSeq and Disney was okay with it. But I talked to them into real estate on the home page. So I'd get lots of traffic so that they wouldn't want me to leave if somebody didn't like astrology. And I stayed there another three years and Disney taught me customer support. A1 top of the line customer support. So here time taught me information management. Disney taught me consumer. And at the end of two, three years, and I was on ABC news and go.com. They said, we're not gonna renew your contract because Michael Eisner feels it's time to get out of the internet business. We're not sure if it's a fad. But ABC News said to them, we're 125 years old and we're sure it's not a fad. So we're staying put, don't touch us. So they, they ended go.com and I had to leave. And suddenly now I'm six years old and I have nowhere to go and no company is paying for content. So when I get into terrible situations like that, but I really enjoyed my time at time and Disney. I learned a lot. I had six years under my belt. I sat on the couch and I asked God for, uh, I said a prayer and I said, please give me direction. And whenever I pray to God, he always answers me. So now I'm sitting in my living room, looking around after I'm praying, I'm done with my prayers. And my eyes go down on the coffee table where the New York Times is sitting there. And I just casually look, you know, I don't even touch it, but it says Stephen King making a fortune. And then I had to turn over the paper, to, it was right at the fold, in ebooks. And I sat back and I thought I could make much more than him in ebooks. So I called Warner Books, who had done my first book, and I was under obligation to ask them about my next one. Would they do an ebook with me? And they went, ooh we don't do eBooks. Now they would never say that now, but in 2001, they did. So I, um, I said, well, I heard a word on the street and, and I have this theory that if you hear it on the street, it's before it gets into the newspaper. It's really current. <laughs> and I always trust what I hear on the street. 
And I said, um, I hear Barnes and Noble's really had to try it on eBooks. They said, oh, be my guest, call them up. You can do your next one with them if you want to. I said, I want to just do eBooks. It's 2001, nobody even knows what they are. But I, um, I called them and they said, Susan, you want an appointment? You live in Manhattan? I said, yes. They said, could you come right now? <laughs> okay, let me throw a dress on and some lipstick. I'll be right down. And I got a five book contract and that allowed me to stay alive. That's so amazing. God always answers to my prayers. Always. I highly recommend praying and asking for direction because, you know, my father used to say, God helps them who help themselves. Yeah. Yeah, so well, he's yeah. not, he's not going to dare cross you, is he? So um, <laughs> is the, um, is this, I was going to say what you got coming up, but you've already told us so beautifully. This is, well, is this the best? App, but I, I'd like to do television. I would love to, do, you know, Broadway video spent a year and a half. They do Saturday Night Live teaching me audience participation and interviewing people. And then uh, they did get Discovery Network did pay for the pilot. But the general manager said, I really hate astrology. And we're all oh. looking at each other. Why is he paying for this pilot? And his assistant, who was important, she was a, a producer. She said, yeah, I hate it too. And I'm like, oh, God. how did I find two people? And, and of course, after we did the pilot, which they forced us to do in Florida at the Telemundo Studios, Broadway Video, couldn't send all their people, which they, they sent 12, but they would have liked to do it in New York, but they had more control. They, then I didn't know that most companies do like 300 pilots in a year and pick the ones they like. Uh, so they said, oh no, we're not gonna go ahead with it. But you know, it's like learning how to ride a bike. After you've learned, you know it. And mm. I, I always think I might get a chance. And you and I did a TV show on the internet that was so much fun for three years, generating so many people coming without any promotion that uh, you were the best director i ever ever worked no, with i was the producer so i was the producer it's always uh, we always have this like in oh, television uh, yeah, we'll see in new york we give all this credence to directors but yes executive yeah. producer in film, yes you're the di it's a good thing to be the director in tv you're basically if you're the tv director you're just above making sandwiches for the crew <laughs> so in my yes. opinion i was That's the right. showrunner well, i was the showrunner I always tell people if they want to do a TV show, if I could have you, because you're so clear. And I'll never forget after you criticized my opening and then I did it again, you said you really listened. I'm like, oh. I better listen. There are 12 people in this room doing their job. I'm, you know, using up their time. Yes, I listen. But you, you know, People say things in different ways. That's why some of us watch the news on the BBC or on CNN or on ABC, NBC, CBS. We all have our favorite, even though a lot of the news is coming off the wire is the same. A certain newscaster will say things in a way that re resonates with us. Mm. And, and, and it's the same with people. When, when someone's giving you advice of, no, make it shorter. Here's an example and let's try it again you have a way of talking to me that i remember and i oh, get it you. and it makes you. sense too and yeah. you said we need it cleaner cleaner and I, and you had your editor sitting right next to you and he's taking notes and he's saying you were talking about mars give me a little bit more on that and i yeah, just yeah, love yeah. that you know so what you're saying just, is um, i'm always right that's a great thing to go out on but look what I was going to say is, is this not the best interview you've ever done? It just, just, just like. Oh, it is. It's the for most posterity. creative. You know, most reporters ask me pretty much a lot of the same questions. Yours no. are completely different. Oh, and I God. love that. It's refreshing. It's yeah. fun. Yeah. But doesn't your, I, I'll let you go, but because you need to go and save the world or you've probably got, um, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> the cast of the cast of frozen are probably banging on your door at the moment but um 
But that, doesn't your heart sink when you go and do an interview that isn't me, but you do an interview and then they're just kind of going like, um, you know, who's who's the best person to get famous? Who's more likely to yeah. be successful this week? Or, it's all yeah, things I've already written. So and I would like to do something new. Well, you will be interested in this. Uh, Louis Vuitton came to us and they are they have picked 200 visionaries. It's actually embarrassing to say it, but they picked me as one. And they and they said, we'd like to hear Mr. Vuitton's chart. He it's a 200th anniversary. So they're celebrating all through the fall. And they said, we're asking everyone to design a trunk because Mr. Vuitton started with his trunks. That's he was the first to make a yeah. flat trunk. Yeah, steamer and, trunks, um, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah, well, the rest were curved. I said, yes, why would yeah. people do curved? Well, the rain would r run off it. You know, yeah, that's why. Yeah, yeah. They didn't know how to make them waterproof. Yeah. And so he went to carpentry school, and then he went to a tanner who was very famous and learned about leather. And then he became a professional packer. You see, what's that? Well, to pack the beautiful dresses correctly and get them into the trunk because he felt that society ladies would be interested in his trunks. Yeah. And so he, he, he did all that preparation so he could direct others. And he figured out a way to make the leather waterproof. Get this, ripping him off and copying him. So he designed his logo that we're all familiar with and he printed them all over the trunk. And that turned out to be such a help so to his genius. brand because people would look for it and he grew actually after he died his son george took over and made it worldwide so he yeah. he was a leo born um august 4th i think it could have been the third i don't have his chart in front of me 19 Obama. and he and he opened his business in 1854 so anyway, I'm going to have the window that I designed with, uh, I wanted a solar system in the box and it's going to be all over the world, including Rodeo Drive where L Louis Vuitton is here in New York on 57th Amazing. Street in Tokyo, in Milan, my box for a half day on September 18th. And wow. I'm definitely going to the window on September 18th and greet my readers if they want to come and look in the window. I'm just so excited that nothing like this has ever happened. And what they said, we'd like you all to give to charity. We will give you the money yeah. and we're going to give you 15 charities to choose from. And they all revolve around children. And I chose Writer Topia, um, where children learn how to write and go to verified sources and write little essays, little newspapers, teach children. These are not private school children. I mean, they're little yeah, yeah, yeah. disadvantaged children, but they learn how to write. Listen, you're an ongoing inspiration, Susan Miller. You really are. And I can't thank you enough <laughs> thank for you. giving me all your time today. This is absolutely oh, thank you. such a pleasure. Such a pleasure. Thank you. I, I, I love talking to you and I hope pretty soon it'll be safe to come to LA. <laughs> Yes, you quite. Know, I'm here in New York and I get on a plane because I miss LA. It's a lot of fun there. And uh, I have you. so many friends that I yeah. would love to come and, and just write under a palm tree. <laughs> exactly, yeah. which is your favorite pastime, yeah. I know. It's fantastic. Yeah, right. Thank you again for your time. Susan Miller, astrologyzone.com. Check it out. Thank you.